Hey golfers and welcome back to another edition of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. And today we've got a two for one, if you will. We have two guests here, both master fairs of Second Swing. We've got Larry Bobka and we have Tyler Fitzel. And today's topic is a little bit kind of almost like a niche discussion, but it also pertains to the modern golf world as well. So um, number one priority is to uh, let Larry introduce his new putter that's been available on Handmade Sticks. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll start there and then we'll kind of uh, broaden the discussion a little bit into maybe the history of the shape of this putter. So first, Larry, you've got it with you. Yep. Introduce the, the new putter. This is your second Handmade Sticks putter that you've designed. It's my so. second Handmade Sticks putter. You know, I'd love to take the credit for the design. The first design came in 1962, yeah. as mm -hmm. you know, the Arnold Palmer designed by putter by Wilson. Um, there's been other copies since then, you know, especially the Crenshaw design uh, by Cleveland. You know, there's a Corey Pavin one, you know, very, a, a very known design of putters. Uh, one of the things that I did, though, was I took a, um, an original and went out and just, you know, basically took the specs, took everything from that and turn in the same. Some of the newer versions of this putter are, have been made and they're a lot heavier. Mm -hmm. I don't think this putter really works being heavier. Okay. okay. And there's a couple reasons why. Um, my friends at Nippon also went out and made me a very special shaft that tried to get us close to the old um, speed model that was made by Wilson. It was a true temper shaft back then. Um, and, you know, and then to me, I put on the iconic putter grip mm -hmm. of, of all time, which is a ping blackout. Uh, because, you know, the original ones had leather. My favorite putter grip of all time was the old Golf Pride Pro only that, you know, was very thin. And, but they don't make that anymore either. So uh, I wanted to put something on there that, you know, uh, you know, Tiger talks about, Crenshaw talks about, you know, trying to feel the weight of the putter. I didn't want a big heavy grip on there. Um, I, I'm a firm believer of your hands working together on a smaller grip will, will give you better feel. You know, it's right. kind of like Trevino says. He goes, what's, what's holding on to the golf club? These things. <laughs> so you want to make sure you use these things, especially in potting. I think you want to use your fingertips and use your thumbs. Right. So it's, you kind of, I like, I mean, if you haven't been, first of all, following some of the stuff that Handmade Sticks and Larry especially has been designing and, and releasing, making available, uh, it's really cool stuff. And it almost, you kind of like to even like look back at and, and bring, you know, history of golf and the golf clubs into your designs here. That's kind of what this is a little bit. It's, it's you know, in a lot, of, in many estimations out there, it's the most iconic putter shape that's been designed i mean and it's uh, it's a very known putter yeah. especially when you know was you know when crenshaw decided to use it and, and win his golf tournaments and a couple masters with it you know and him being such a great putter it, it you know it, it it kind of turned into it turned into his kind of putt his putter you know but originally was designed for palmer back in the day at wilson so um yeah you know a lot of the designs that i do is well, first of all, I'm old, Drew, so <laughs> I, I don't like to see the thing, I don't like to see things in the game go away. You know, yeah. I think there's a lot of great technology out there. I think there's a lot of great designs out there, but I, but also at the end of the day, if you're being kind of a golfing purist, if you want to stand on the range and hit golf shots, you know, what do you want to feel? What do you want to, you know, to really get better, you know? I think you need a set of blade irons. Maybe not play them all the time. And I also think you need I also think you need some persimmon woods too, or at least a persimmon driver to go out there and find out how good your golf swing really mm -hmm. is. I mean, if you can hit that, you can hit anything. That's what you know? and Todd it, Dempsey's doing in the yeah, Q School of Champions doing. Yeah, it. you know, and then you take this putter. I mean, what's putting? It's just rolling the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember the time being down with Jackie Burke down at Champions and, you know, and Jackie's got some putter from the 1930s and he's just sitting out there making putts and making putts. And he's like, well, you know, you'd like to think there's magic in the putter, but there's really magic in the stroke. Mm -hmm. But how can I, how can I really tell if I'm creating a magical stroke 
unless I got something like this to putt with or at least something like this to practice with on occasion to really figure out if mm -hmm. I'm doing it the right way, if I'm really hitting the center sure. of the face. Sure, that's kind of what golf club and, and putter manufacturing has become now is sort of trying to hide the natural putting stroke of somebody or at least fix it in a way. And so I know like, you know, we were talking about this the other day, Tyler, where how that design has gone away almost com completely in, yeah. in new putter design or new putter technology. Well, Wilson if you will. has their milled version of it. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but you know, I mean, it's you're their, not gonna, it's, a, it's their putter. So right. why why wouldn't you? Do I mean, it, rarely right? you guys probably never fit somebody for something like this nowadays. Very rarely, right? So like, I mean, I guess Tyler, from your perspective, can you kind of just go over what you know the in your mind the history of, of this and maybe yeah. why it has kind of faded away a little bit. Well, the first the first thing um, when I saw that Larry had had made this, it kind of dawned on the beginning of my golf career, which was in the early '90s. It's when I started to play, and at that time, this putter was still winning majors. It was still mm -hmm. winning tournaments, and so I had something very similar to this. And even to that matter, is on my very some of my very first clubs, I had wooden woods, right? You know, and, and pretty much hand-me-down blades that, that I had around to get started with. The mm -hmm. And so it was kind of that, that love of history, and it was also a highlighted time with Harvey Pennock. And Harvey Pennock had, had uh, uh, Ben Crenshaw as one of his longtime students, al along with Tom Kite's kind of a storied history yeah. there. And, and so even for that, I had, I had purchased a, a Harvey Pennock putter mm -hmm. that was made just like this, um, so, something to the Red River or down in yep. Austin, Texas. And, um, so for me, I remember even, um, I believe it was like 1994 or 95, like uh, the first three majors uh, were won with this style putter. It was, uh, it was Ben Crenshaw, there, I think there was Corey Pavin in the U.S. Open, and then it was uh, John Daly in the British Open. Mm -hmm. So even in my, my kind of growing years into this game, th that to me was relevant technology. Right. And so I kind of thought, as, as this come out, I had said to Larry one day, I said, what happened to all the classics? Yeah. You know, and there aren't really many on the market. Some really expensive stuff if you want to go back and buy one of these now. Right. Um, but to me, it was the technology where there it was it wasn't even aim and shoot. It was kind of hole and roll. Mm -hmm. It was just look at the hole and just kind of let let the ball roll towards the hole. And that to me, um, I putted with one for many years, played a lot of really good golf too. Um, but also thought about, you know, where has this been? Well, Phil Mickelson won with it, you know, the, the PGA Championship a few years ago. Right. So it's like, this is actually still a winning style. This isn't, there's not as much of the adoption to the tour level to that. Right. So I, I could, that's one of the things I posed to Larry about this was like, well, whatever happened to these? They're, they're good. They kind of swing themselves. Well, it, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, you look at a, you look at an old painting, right? And, and it's this beautiful painting that somebody painted and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and now it's kind of like, oh, it's, you know, this computer generated picture and it's like, oh, it's amazing and how simple it was and it's absolutely perfect. Well, you know, golf clubs back in the day weren't ever really perfect, I guess. They were only perfect in the hands of the person that used it. Mm -hmm. You know, this design, you know, like I said, came from, you know, Palmer's relationship with Wilson. You know, up to that point, he had putted with, you know, a very similar model, which was, you know, Tommy Armour Ironmaster, which was a N-shafted blade, had a bigger hosel, and the shaft went inside. You know, so, you know, having worked for Bob Mandrella and have had a few cocktails over the years after work, <laughs> you know, there are a lot of conversations about, you know, how things were, and, you know, when I was... You know, my early to mid twenties working at Wilson. Yeah, you know, I wanted to know everything. So it's like, come on, Bob, I'll go buy you a couple of cocktails. Tell me about the eighty or two. <laughs> and it was really, you know, it was it was an idea of trying to move more mass into the head. You know, putters back then. I mean, this putters compared to modern stands it's, is light. I mean, this is three hundred ten grams. Everything's three, right. 350, you know, three fifty, three seventy, four hundred. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're you know. But this putter was light, but they were trying to move even more weight in there. And, and they had thought about, 
you know, and Palmer had seen, you know, because John Reuter had come out with bullseyes, and bullseyes right. were bullseyes were kind of the first popular over the hosel putters. So it's like, well, hey, why don't we kind of take like the over the hosel here? We can thin this out, put more weight in here, you know, and there's more mass behind the putter. You know, let's let's go from let's go from 285 grams in the head to that's 310. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's that's a huge step back right. in 1962. I mean, you're talking you're talking two years after I was born. Gee whiz. Uh, so <laughs> that's where it kind of came from was yeah. the idea of doing that, you know. And then Palmer and Wilson parted ways and then it turned in the 8802 which actually was just kind of the model number that that it was kind of just the the part number they gave it right it just so sort of stuck. yeah it just stuck is well yeah. we're just going to call it the 8802 um you know and then like i said you know won a lot of golf tournaments it, it yeah, you know, Trevino won his majors with it. I mean, there are a lot of major golf tournaments won with this style of putter. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, it, it it's not, I mean, geez, you look at this, and nobody's going to say this is flashy. No. Okay, for 1962, no. it was flashy. Okay, for 2022 or 23, it's not flashy. It doesn't have any excitement to it. It doesn't have any, you know, what are the MOI numbers? What right. is it going to do for me? How is it going to... You know, the, the golfing world has come into the track man, Quintech. I got to have some great numbers. I got to know what the MOI is. I got to know what they did with the shaft. How is it? You know, so it it, it loses a little bit. It, it, it becomes a little bit more about science than it becomes about art. But to me, art is still, you know, kind of like Tyler said, still about rolling the golf ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like I tell my customers all the time. I mean, to me... Putting's like playing cornhole. I mean, I got the beanbag in my hand. I'm looking at that hole. I, I just got to swing my arm and toss at the right distance. Well, what am I doing with putting? I'm standing on the side doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, can I do it with this? Of course I can do it with this. A lot of people are afraid now. Yeah. We've, we've told the golfing public to be afraid of something like this because it's not going to help you. Right. Well, I kind of look at it the other side. I think it really does. I mean, you, you know, before we started, we were talking about, you know, I think this is a putter that, again, and we didn't price it crazy. No. You know, so somebody has to have to feel like that they have to give up a mortgage payment, you know, that their <laughs> right. wife's gonna kick them out of the house. <laughs> but it's also something to be downstairs in their basement on their putting mat hey, let's work with this putter. Mm -hmm. I might not putt with it all the time when I play, but it's going to help my putting stroke. It's going to tell me if I'm hitting the center of the face, because I'm going to tell you right now, mm -hmm. if I don't hit it in the right place on this putter, it's going to feel, favorite golf term, it's going to feel wonky. Yeah, and it's probably going to perform a little bit differently too. Yeah, but, absolutely. But the but ball's not going to come off the way it's right. supposed to. Right, and it's it's to your point, I'm probably one of those brainwashed individuals that like... I see something that small and I am just like scared of it, you know? So yeah. like I would hey, how'd be, you, how'd you play, how'd you play my irons over Thanksgiving? They were, they were solid. I see, will say there you I was go. So, they were solid. Yeah. See. I had to get used to them a little bit, <clears throat> but once that happened, you, it was of good. Of course you did. Okay. But just, that's probably, just checking. that's probably real. I mean, that's probably how it would be if I took this and put one of these in the bag. I, and I, I'm using a ping hardwood right now, right. which is the, complete opposite of this. absolutely uh so it's just it's fascinating because nowadays like there is none of this out there it's all about the technology like you said the moi like to me mallets are becoming more and more popular and so like right. is there like do you like would you guys say that there's golfers out there maybe tour level or scratch players that would benefit from kind of leaving the high MOI craze or, or do you think, I mean, what do you, I'll what take you guys' take on that? I'll take it yeah. one step further. I yeah. think there's people that even are even higher handicaps that would benefit from it because they would learn how to putt. They would learn how to hit the center of the face. You know, what happened mm -hmm. when, you know, hey, there's my blade irons and behind me there's a set of ping I-2s. Yep. Okay. Well, those were the rage in the 80s, right? The, you got to have it forget about those you got to yeah. go to these okay well, what did some people find out some people found out that hey, I got a little sloppy with these 
Am I really hitting the center of the face? I can understand wanting to have, you know, better miss hits, okay? But I also think there's that point if you're really into the game and if you're really a student of the game and the student of your golf swing, I think you want to test yourself, you know? Even yeah. if it's just on the range, I think you want to be able to stand out there and you know what? Hey, buy a seven iron, buy a six iron. You can buy a single club. Go take it to the range or go in your, go in your monitor downstairs in your basement and see what you do with it. See, how, see if you really do hit the center of the face. I don't think there's anything. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you want to challenge yourself? I mean, it's like shooting, right? You got the target. You're not just trying to hit the piece of paper. You're trying to hit the bullseye. Right. Okay. Well, so I'm practicing and practicing shooting my gun to hit that bullseye. Well, it's the same thing. I'm trying and trying to hit the hole or I'm trying to hit the green. I'm trying to get tighter. Why wouldn't I want to try to make my golf swing better by taking a step back to the things that won lots and lots of major championships challenge mm. myself a little bit yeah yeah you, you've seen that in your fittings too I, I imagine like a lot of it's a lot of players that have that same perspective that i do where it's just like i need all this forgiveness i need this mass behind but in reality with their putting stroke maybe something as simple as this could could be effective yeah and the like the top level the pga tour and the lpga tour um they they create uh validity for the company yeah. But they don't necessarily create that validity for the product. Mm -hmm. Right. So we all know that that they have very similar, if not the same sort of equipment we can get. But the vast majority of them are playing things that we don't get. Right. Right. So what what that's doing is it's creating marketing and marketing really is kind of continued to spin off. Um, we see uh, we see the style of putter, but we only see it in a small select group. Mm -hmm. And so if, if it, for instance, if it was a style of putter that won three out of the next four majors, that would be on the, on the shelves everywhere. It would. Oh, yeah. And I, I look back at the, you take, for instance, some of the best, who are the best putters in the game? Like, whether it's modern or, or just go back through history. We, you have to look at a guy like Jack Nicklaus, mm -hmm. right? He won 18 majors, but 16 of them with a putter like that. You talk about Palmer. You talk about um, whether it was Trevino. a Trevino as a as a putter. Even Crenshaw yeah. won countless tournaments a, a, along with majors to this. I think about some of the others in the game that that kind of escape our mind with it. A putter like that was in uh, Nick Faldo's hand, right? For some uh, some wins. Whether Jerry Pate, Pate, um, Watson. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. We talk about Craig Stadler. Uh, we talk we talk about that putter. And even if you go back from from that putter, that was still the style. We didn't, you know, the the, the ping answer really created the counterbalanced or yeah. a bit more counterbalanced pocket, mm -hmm. the shaping and the styling. And we know that's very popular, and that has probably won as many, if not more, majors than that style. Mm -hmm. But it's those two. Yeah. It's some version of the answer or some almost identical version of this as well. Right. So I, yeah, it's almost like I, I'm curious now because I wonder at what point did the golf community become enamored with options other than those two things? Because the answer model is the one that's been, you know, or that shape, you know, other variations from different companies, whatever. Right. But that shape has been sort of the, the really the only model that has supplanted this one in terms of success and like trophies on, on the big stage. Um, oh. And so it's those two. At what point did all these other shapes and sizes and, and weights come in and, and golfers thinking that that was a more valid option? Well, you know, you got the answer. I mean, you know, I think he might have did the original design back for the answer. Late 60s, I believe. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not yeah. the biggest ping historian. Then you had some guys yeah. win. There was a guy that won on tour. I can't remember his name, but the, the one that most people saw, George Archer won. George Archer was a great putter back in the 60s and 70s and George Archer used the used the answer you know um, uh, so you start getting people uh, Howard Twitty great friend of mine who I'll see in Arizona when I get down there and in Howard was a great putter putted with an putted with an answer 
you know, so then all of a sudden, you know, you've got this great answer style and, mm -hmm. and you know, there's variations. There was the pal, whatever, answer two, whatever, you know, then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you get, you know, Mark O'Mara's putt and the Tiger's putt with an answer two. Now all of a sudden you start, you, you get, you know, the Scotty Camerons of the world and, you know, it's like, well, hey, this is great, but I can make it better. You know, I can make it a little heavier. You know, maybe, maybe Mark O'Mara's or, or uh, Tigers had some lead tape on mm -hmm. it to get the weight up to 330 grams. Well, now let's, you know, let's make it, you know, Tigers putter, by the way, is 326 grams. Uh, maybe a little more now, put a little bit of lead tape on it. So it might, yeah. be, it might be a little heavier now. Okay. But, you know, but that's where then all of a sudden, you know, the, the answer style blows up. Right. You know, then all of a sudden the technology comes in. You know, I mean, I can't tell you that some of the things that we were doing in Wilson back in the 80s, trying to get a better idea about what shaft flex somebody needed and whatever, you know, then all this, all this moment of inertia, the metal woods start coming in and titanium yeah. woods, everybody starts talking about size and resistance to the twist. Well, well, you know, it kind of filters down, it kind of filters down, you know, and to me it kind of started, you know, Pink kind of started a little bit of everything with yeah. with with irons and putters. The I two, you know, and, yeah, and everybody kind of played. Off, everybody kind of played off of that. I mean, I, hey, I designed the Wilson Ultra irons back in the eighties. Well, what were they? Well, they were competitors to those. Yeah, the right. I2s. You know, yeah, custom fit and you know, cast U.S. cast product and you know something. You, so you know, everybody starts. So now yeah. all of a sudden it starts snowballing, you know, and then all of a sudden somebody comes up and goes, well, hey, this, you know, Karsten's saying this has got more resistance to twist than this putter does. Well, we better have one. Yeah, we that kind of. We better have, we better have one because if every, you know, they're the number one selling putter, we got to do some, mm -hmm. we got to do something now. Right. So then it just, you know. Then it just, everybody starts snowballing, you know, and it's really for the to be the hard person to be in the room and going, hey, you know what? Let's stick with this. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, this is tried and true. We sold, we sold a whole bunch of these. Let's stay with it. And, you know, it, it it's hard. Right. Cause you know, you, it would cause be, you want to make money. Right. Well, I, and now I'm at the point right now, it would be very hard for me to put with anything but a mallet. Oh. It's just where I'm at mentally. Yeah. I've used a mallet now for, gosh, a decade. Yeah. And I, every time I put one down, I, I look at it, my confidence is just gone. And that's not, again, that's that's a combination of things going on in my brain because of that. But, I mean, it's it goes to show how everything has changed in putter design. Well, and, we'll see, we, see yeah. that, we see that all the time. People bring in, and, you know, and especially, especially, you know, you're a hell of a lot younger than I am, Drew. <laughs> And, but you see that and people walk in and see, people see what they see on TV. Well, when I was growing up, this is what I saw on TV. Right. This is what was winning golf tournaments. And when I was in my, you know, when I was, when I was playing high school and college golf, you know, I want to have one of these, but hey, they originally sold for about 15 or $20 and people were reselling them for two, three, four hundred dollars at that time because that was a big collector and mm -hmm. that's what players were playing with. You know, it's kind of like having an M85 McGregor driver that, you know, if I wanted to try to get one in college, it probably would have cost me anywhere from 500 to $1,000. Mm -hmm. You know, I got mine now because somebody traded one in it at second swing. Really? And, you know, <laughs> and, and we don't, you know, we don't have a value. And I sent it off and got it fixed by Nimbran, who's another part yeah. of handmade sticks. And, you know, I, now I got a beautiful M85 driver. There you go. Thanks to him and <laughs> thanks to some customer dropping it off. You know, do you cost, think? Cost me a little bit to get it fixed. Yeah, but, I suppose. Yeah. I suppose. Uh, yeah. Do you think this is a, a theory? I'll start with you, Tyler. But do you think maybe the speed of greens has changed some of this too as part of it? Like, we're now a, a heavier putter head is, is needed because of how fast greens are or maybe or am I off base there? Putting is unique. Yeah. It's the one thing that, that gets, I would say, the most unique, whether we're talking about playing, whether we're talking about fitting, yeah. even if we're just sitting here talking. 
putting is unique to that. And one of the, I did ask Larry about that, that question is one of the things that I was thinking in my own mind is have conditions changed enough where he certainly got to see with his work, he got to see the majors and the condition yeah. at these golf courses that these were being played on. Right. And I don't think the speed of the green is the reason something's going to work or not. Now, the reason to that is if we have a putter, let's say, for instance, this is 310 grams. Mm -hmm. That's really what even Scotty Cameron balances at. At 35 inches, 310. And his putters were then, what, 320 if you got down an inch and if 330 if you got down an inch. It's like That's how pa uh, putters were balanced and all the major companies are doing this. So this isn't out of, out of touch with reality today either. But you're going to have to take that, and tour players are like this. So how many times does a tour player switch a putter with a different weight from golf tournament to golf tournament? Right. They don't. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, it, the, the one thing that you may change, if you're talking about changes, maybe adding or subtracting a wedge or doing something with spin around the green. But for the most part, we know that no matter the golf course, no matter the condition, you're going to go out and you're going to play with your set of equipment. You may subtract or add a club that's more unique to that golf right. course. Um, but I don't think it is. I think what, what this does is th this is more about how you tend to putt. And the number one thing that's most important for me in a fitting, and, and this is what we look for, is are we going to get the right kind of launch and spin and speed? You know, if we look at a putt in general, the number one thing, I don't care if it's on fast or slow greens, is is that ball get around that hole. Because mm -hmm. if it's around that hole, it has a chance to go in. And so um, this idea to, and, and I do see this, we see this in fitting. Someone will come in and say, I've got a putter for fast greens and i got a putter for slow greens. Yeah, I've heard that too. Is that, are you almost... I'll let you take that one. You know, yeah, I mean... <laughs> hate it. You just disagree with <laughs> that yeah. idea? Hate, okay. it. hate yeah. it about as much as center shafted putters. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, to, to go along with Ty, I also think that the way people putt has changed also. You know, you look back in the days, you watch you watch some of the old Masters highlights from the 60s and the 70s, and everybody's kind of locked in, and they're putting very wristy. Yeah, I have okay. noticed that. Well, now, all of a sudden, as, as putters came along, everybody starts talking, well, we're gonna use the bigger muscles, and we're just, we're just gonna swing our arms more. Well, if I'm gonna swing my arms more away from my body, I better have something heavier on the end yeah. to do that. Okay. Can I don't necessarily that. believe that's the that's the best way for people to putt. I mean, if you look at still the best putters in the world, their arms, their upper arms tend to be a little bit locked in. You know, you see guys like Joaquin Neiman and Justin Rose mm -hmm. taking their shirt because they're trying to keep this connection and allow that putter head to swing. So I I think. You know, it kind of went to the extreme a while back, maybe about 10 years ago, where it's like, oh, we're just going to keep this triangle and we're going to do, well, to a certain degree, that's correct, but it's not totally correct. You know, mm -hmm. you still have to have some feel. You have to allow that putter head to, to do its job, which because it's on an angle, even if you take it straight back, that toe's going to open, it's mm -hmm. going to square and it's going to close, you yeah. know? Every golf swing is like a swinging door. It's square, it opens, closes, and goes past. If I don't go past, then I end up holding the face. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of strokes now where, where people are holding the face a lot more. Well, if I'm like this, yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I, I don't want a putter that's 310 grams. I'd rather have something at 380 or 400 that I'm just going to do this and but right, they'll keep I the face as square as possible. But I think like that. that's, to me, that's too mechanical because in my world, the three most important things in putting are speed, speed, and speed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I don't, if I don't get it, if I don't hit it the right speed, it's never got a chance to go in the hole. Right. If I can't hit it the right speed, I can't read the green. And it, and it, I mean, everything just revolves around my ability. To hit it, you know, that chair over there that's out of sight, folks, and my ability to stand there and roll it to one of the legs of that chair that you picked me to put yeah. it to. Yeah. If I can't do that, 
you know, and that's where that's where all the technology in the world doesn't help anybody. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you have no technology or a ton of technology. If I don't have that in, inherent ability in my stroke to do that, and that's one of the things that Quintec does for us is help people with speed because now they get the right launch, they get the right overspin, they get the right side spin, which in essence gives you the proper speed. Gives it you a gauge on what Gives the you a gauge of yeah. what the proper speed and how the ball should come off my putter. Now I can go practice. And now then you have the gauge and the feel. So that's I kind of almost like that's where this conversation is going is there's a there's a feel element that yeah. and you know a, a classic model that you know you're maybe designing or some of these other um, I guess these boutique brands that you're seeing you know right. the dot the the Dempsey and the and the wooden clubs right. or the persimmon clubs right like there's a there's a feel element to these things that a golfer can get out of that they're not going to get out of the newest technology or you know I I, I can tell you for a fact I, I like my hardwood butter yeah. uh, I like that it you know, performs pretty well on, on the miss hits that I have, but they feel the same. If I hit it off the heel, I hit it off the toe, I hit it the center, that thing feels the same. Right. Um, so, and, and to your point, and, and well, both your points, like I don't get the feedback right. that I probably need to actually improve my putting stroke right. because of that. Well, I mean, it's just all, you know, and again, kind of relate things back to shooting, but think about it. If I'm shooting, you know, have you ever you ever gone shooting? I have not, but okay. I might have to after okay. this. I don't know. Well, if if I <laughs> grab a twenty two, you know, I'm gonna shoot a twenty two, I can hold that with one hand and just pop them off. Yeah. Because there's no power to that gun. It's not coming out very fast. It's a very light handgun. I grab a forty four magnum, I don't care what Clint Eastwood did in the movie. I better have two <laughs> hands on that because if I don't, that thing's gonna come back and hit me in that thing's gonna come back and hit me in the head. But it's a much heavier gun and it's a much yeah. more it's a much more aggressive shot. Okay. So there's feel there's feel in that, okay? There's feel in the guy that, that shoots shooting a basketball. Yeah. Okay. I, I can I can get in the proper position. I can do it, but I still need to know how hard. Yeah. You know, and There's why a proper you, touch involved. With yeah. Anything. If you ever yeah. played any basketball on a basketball team, why do you stand there for an hour after practice shooting free throws? Because you want that feel when the nerves mm -hmm. get in there, that right. you can do the same you thing. Trust it. Well, yeah. it's kind of the same thing with putting. Okay. Yeah, you want that feel in your in your long game. You want to feel in the irons, but hey. When it comes down to where do people all of a sudden, you know, where do the yips come from? Where did, where, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I had a, I had a guy in a really nice putting stroke, but man, I could see the white in his knuckle. I mean, he's just in there getting a putter fitting. Yeah. I'm like, dude, what do you do? What happens when he goes, well, I'm gripping it light today. I'm like, holy wow. I mean, you know, this doesn't work anymore. Yeah. I don't care how much putter head you have there. That's why, you know, you, you kind of want to get that feel of the head. You want to get out there to, to allow that putter to do its work. And it's hard because if I'm in a full swing, you know, I, I really, you know, I'm swinging so hard and I'm swinging so fast that, yeah, well, how'd that feel? Well, feel off a titanium driver or the modern golf ball is really, to me, a little irrelevant because yeah. there really isn't a lot of feel to it. You might feel if you hit it in the toe, but there's, yeah. there's, so, but when I get around, when I get on the green now, and I've hit two beautiful shots, say I'm playing Chaskin, I've just hit a great drive, I've hit a wedge on the green, and now I got a nice little six footer that breaks left. I mean, I want something that I feel like I can just feed it to the hole, mm -hmm. you know? I, and yeah. for you, because you've always putted with a mallet, yeah, that's what you do it with. I don't like doing it that way because that's not how I grew up. Yeah. And that's not how I saw the best putters when I first got out there and started working with tour players and, you know, tried to play for myself a little bit. You know, it, it's, it, hey, we're just, we're just feeling. We're just, yeah. we're, we're just rolling the rock. Mm -hmm. What does everybody say? Rolling the rock. Right. And I think if, if you were to pull the top players in the world, either the men or the women, in terms of the putting stroke itself, not not the result, uh, the putting stroke itself, I think the number one thing that they would answer with that's that's important to them is feel. 
Yeah, gotta, have right. a gotta have a feel yeah. for it, right? We hear that over and over and over again. And not, we do see a bit more of the, the putters that are less traditional from, from years past as well, the bigger mallets and such. Yeah. I think like Ricky Fowler's a good example. You know, with the putting stroke, and, and you know him, right? Yeah. You get to watch the kid grow up. Yeah. The putting stroke with an answer style Mm, to great. now, to yeah. now, all of a sudden, yeah. is his game revitalized with uh, the the new putter, the, the you know the long broom, broomstick type, big mallet? It is, but the same thing that he wanted with the other putter is the same thing he wants with this feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, and it, it, it becomes you know, hey, you got a bag full of golf clubs. I don't I don't care if you got a bag full of mine stuff with Todd Dempsey persimmon woods, or you have a bag full of. Uh, ping I twos, or you have you know the most modern set of Callaway irons, in Woods and Odyssey putter. What are you looking for in your golf bag? What's the number one thing you're looking? You're looking for confidence, right? Mm -hmm. I want confidence from those things mm -hmm. because if I'm going to go play a round of golf, and you know, hey, none of us practice as much as a tour player does. No, right? I think all three of us combined. Yeah, all of us combined don't, yeah. and you know. And especially at my age, I don't practice at all anymore. <laughs> so now you go out there, you hit a few balls on the range to loosen up, you hit a couple putts, and you go out and play. Well, I want confidence in those things. I want confidence in the ability to hit the golf shot that when I'm standing out there that I can hit the wedge 95 yards. I can hit my 7-iron. I won't say how far my 7-iron goes because it goes really short these days. <laughs> you know, but, but you want to be able to go out there and play and have some fun and go, wow, you know what, I didn't play my best, but man, I hit a lot of really good shots. I got a lot of trust, so when I throw them back in the trunk, you know what, I feel like I can play golf with these. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not saying that everybody should buy one of these putters. I'm saying, you know what, but you gotta find a putter that you're gonna have confidence with that you can go with. You know, the hardest, the hardest fit for me, and, I can, and I'm sure Tyler will agree, is the guy that comes in with six different putters. Oh, yeah. You know, well, I use this one. Does this one. happen a lot? I, oh, oh yes. yeah. I, yes. I use this one oh on gosh, Tuesday. Yeah. I use this one on Wednesday. <laughs> oh, this one I used for a week. I putted pretty yeah. good. Then it went. He's got no idea what the loft and lie of those putters are. They all have different center of gravities. A lot of times they have different lengths, different grips. Okay. And then, you know, you have the conversation, well, what golf ball do you? Well, uh, whatever I find, yeah, from there. yeah, whatever yeah. I find, yeah, I mean, how? Where's the confidence yeah. in that? Where's there's the, also where's no, the there's feel, no feel in that? There's no feel in that. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, That's... there's there's <laughs> zero, there's zero feel in that. So now, you know, we're trying to what we try to do, and and I, I say it to customers all the time. I'm just I'm actually trying to dumb down your putting game, I'm trying to make it simpler. Let's take it back to the roots of where it is, which is, it's like playing cornhole. It's like yeah. just swinging your arm and throwing the bean bag, okay? Yeah. Let's start doing that with the part. Let's just start rolling at the right speed. Because usually the guy that comes in, and you know him, we've seen him. Yeah. You know, well, how many times? Well, you know, three putt four times around. Well, just think about this. If I can fix your speed with the right putter, the right loft, the right lie, maybe a couple thoughts about your putting stroke, then I can eliminate your, your, I can eliminate your three putts and there's four of them around you average. Now I just, you know, I, I always shoot 82. I never broke seven, I never broke 80. Well, if I can eliminate four, now all of a sudden I shot 78. Yep. And that doesn't even count a couple more putts going in the hole. So to me, what we try to do, it's the same thing if you fit a driver, you know, and he's really good at doing it. It's just you're instilling confidence in that mm -hmm. new club. Right. Okay. I want you to be confident. I want you to be able to, to, to swing the putter properly. I don't really care what it is. You know, personally, I think everybody should have a putter, a seven iron or a six iron and a persimmon driver to test themselves if they're that serious about the game. You yeah. know, and find out. You can definitely know. see the, the potential benefit to something like that. Because I think, cause, well, and I think even to a larger point, the, you know, there's a lot of 
I don't want to say propaganda, but you know, market. You mentioned the marketing before. There's, right. there's a lot of it out there now, and it's all about the forgiveness and the MOI and where the weight is and all these things. And and the argument you guys are making is essentially like, don't feed into that automatically. It can benefit you for right. sure, but there's also the benefits you might be losing switching to that if you go away from something more traditional that gives you the feel, yeah. gives you the those well, elements that you well, might need. What are most human beings scared of doing? They're kind of scared of finding out that it's them and it's not those <laughs> yeah. two, right? Most golfers yeah. are afraid of that. You know, is it that is, they're the problem? That they're that they're that they're the problem. It's not you, it's your clubs. It's good, right? That's good not slogan that's what I've been, that's yeah. what I've heard. That's <laughs> you know, that's what it but is. it but it but it's a two-way street. Yeah. It's an no, a, it's yep. an absolute two-way street and and if you're a top player, it actually becomes kind of a four-way street because it becomes you, becomes your golf clubs, becomes your instructor, and it becomes your physical trainer. You yeah. know, and you can even throw the five way in there with the psychology, the sports the psychologist, sport psychologist yeah. you know, so now it becomes this five sided head. But ultimately, <laughs> you know, I got to be accountable for what I do when I play, you know, and it's hard sometimes to to do that. But, you know, we do such a nice job. I don't even want to say nice. Nice is even where we do such a great job at Minnetonka getting people to be confident in what they have. And also saying, hey, you know, you got a club here that you hit pretty good. You know, we're going to give you a new driver. Like you said, you know what? That three and five wood, let's leave it for now. It's an older technology. But you just sit there and just absolutely roped it. And they're like, yeah, I mean, like when I'm just, if I'm driving it bad, you know, the first thing I do is go to my three wood. And I'll hit one right down. I'll hit one 235 right down the middle of the fair. Dude, then why would we take that out of your back? Right. Okay. When that stops happening, come back and see us again. Right. 